What's up guys, it's Greg here, and today we're going to learn how to change the background color of a WordPress blog post or page. So why don't we navigate to our about page, and we'll see how to change any background color like the background on this page, and it affects blog posts in the same way, same technique. This will also show you how to change the background color of your sidebar, your header, your footer, or really anywhere in WordPress. And we'll do it the CSS way, show you a couple tricks, and then we'll do it the elementary way, which is obviously super modern. So I hope you learn a few new WordPress tricks, and let's get started. By the way, thanks so much to Paul, who in the comments mentioned on one of our older background color videos that they could have integrated some better functionality when it comes to coloring specific blocks, meaning blocks in the new WordPress editor. Couldn't agree more, Paul. So speaking of which, let's make sure we have our classic editor plugin installed. Let's go to plugins, add new, and we're gonna add classic editor right here, which is obviously really popular with 5 million installs. And that way, when we click edit page, our pages aren't you know, taken over by this new block editor, which we are all still a bit confused about, even though I'm sure WordPress had great intentions. So let's go to install now on classic editor and activate it. Okay, great. And so now when we go to our about page and edit it, we're going to get the normal WordPress screen that we built our site originally in. All right. So just sort of the blog post editor we all know and love. All right. Let's open this page in a new window. And then what I also want you to do is open up the CSS panel for our entire WordPress website. So we're going to go to Appearance, Customize. We can leave that specific page for now. And click on Custom CSS. And we can see I've written a couple things. We're just going to start writing below whatever CSS we want to keep. All right, and so what you got to do is come to your specific poster page and right click on the section where you want to change the background color. Now we're going to hit inspect and we are in Google Chrome. Every browser has this tool, but I just find it to be the easiest in Google Chrome. So I'd recommend you hop over to Chrome if you haven't already. It's where a lot of developers are. All right. Now on the right, when we move our mouse around, it's going to highlight the area that we want to work on. And the tricky thing is a lot of the areas will be highlighted in blue. So let's make sure that when we right click, inspect, we don't move our mouse too quickly. All right, so we can see that the blue area on the about us comes right over to article ID post 59. And this is the HTML of our site right here, but it also shows us the right CSS to use. So in our case here, it's a nice little all in one viewer. Because this specific little chunk with article ID, post 59, class, blah, 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 all the way up to the closing article tag was highlighted. That means that this is the specific area we want to target. So we only change the color of this specific page section and not other pages. If you wanted to change the background color of all pages, you could use something like main. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to use it. So let's take that article ID, which is just post 59. If you'd like, you can double click on it and then copy it. Let's take it back to our customized window and then paste it. All right. And we're going to write a hashtag because it's an ID or you'd write a period if, or if it were a class. And now we're going to do the open alligator brackets, hit enter and just write background dash color and choose whatever color you want, and then close the alligator brackets, and then publish. All right, let's see if it worked. We're gonna go refresh our page, and awesome. So now we have a background color of green. Doesn't look great because the text is a light gray, but you could also change the text to a white color. All right, so that's generally how to change the background color of part of your blog. What if we wanted to change the background color of like the header? Well, we could right click on the header area and inspect. And we get the main menu menu. 
and that is an ID also. So we just have to go back to customize, and I'm going to show you how to write it out. Just write hashtag main dash menu dash. Was that what it was? Menu main menu. Starting to make me hungry to go look at a actual menu. Alligator bracket, then same background dash color, and we can make that something different. And publish it. And conveniently enough, in our customized window, it shows up dynamically right here. So of course that would show up on our live site as well. All right, guys, so that's making you a little more skillful here. In this case, that menu area is condensed to this specific little width. So if we inspected it and we went a little wider, I think we tried the entire navigation and I'm just using different CSS selectors like navigation, which our site was built on originally. So your site might have slightly different words, but the principle is the same. Inspect it and find out what words are in there. And it looks like, in fact, the top bar was the total width. So sometimes it takes a little trial and error to figure out the exact CSS selector for the entire section you're trying to work on. All right, guys, now that we've really hacked up our blog, why don't we learn how to put an image over one of these backgrounds instead of the color? So back in your customize, all you need to do is make a new space to write and write background colon URL. Then we're going to use a parenthesis and close parenthesis and just put the ending semicolon and then put two quotation marks. And I know that this is the right CSS to write because I've studied the W3 schools a lot. And if you look that up and just put in W3 with any command, you're going to get a really awesome tutorial, which you can basically just copy and paste. So in our case, we're just copy pasting like background image this entire part because that's the CSS we'd want to write. Or more importantly, down here, we could just copy this entire part. And of course, using W3 will make our CSS perfect. I forgot that image part. And if you forget any part of the CSS you're trying to write and the punctuation isn't perfect, it just won't work at all. And you might be confused why it's not working. Well, it just has to be punctually perfect. Okay, so let's go find ourselves an image. We can go to our dashboard tab and click on media and then grab any image you might think of, like this picture of brunch. All right, and then you just need to grab the file URL, just copy that. And you can come back to your window and paste that in between the quotation marks. Let's go to the about us section and we're gonna, oops, make sure to publish that. Now we'll refresh our about us section. And we have a huge picture of brunch on top of a blog post. So obviously not very helpful for the design or the user experience, but just so you know how to do that. Along with that, there's plenty of other CSS commands you can use to change how that image interacts with the page. For example, you might want that background image to cover the whole section or to repeat or do something like that. If you'd rather have a pattern as your background, that's easy too. You can just Google anything like cute pattern background. And I'm not sure people use this technique as much anymore, but it can be nice on that entire page background, especially if it's really subtle. Just click images and then grab yourself a pattern you might like. All right, like these kittens and then just right click and save image as and we're going to make this the kitten bg for background and of course make sure to give credit where credit is due whenever you use images on the web so now we can go back to our wordpress and go to our media library add a new media and select that background from our desktop there it is and all you need to do with that background pattern is the same thing we do with the image just copy the file url Voila, 
and then we're going to paste that in over the image link. All right, and we could do that with the header too. And we're going to publish and now refresh our about page. And that looks kind of cool actually. So now the kittens are just dancing all across the page. So a lot of ways to make your site really come to life, guys. I hope that helped explain a little bit of how when you see a really cute WordPress site like Soella or like Katy Perry's site or something, how they use images and different types of content to make it come to life.